There aren't many cars that have transcended automotive culture to such a degree that they become instantly recognisable to even non-car enthusiasts. The Jaguar E-Type is one such example. It made such an impact when it was unveiled to the world in the Geneva Motor Show of March 1961. So here we are in 2021, celebrating 60 years of this iconic British sports car. So we thought, what better way to do that than to come to Bridge North in Shropshire, home to international specialist S&G Barrett, to drive their fantastic example of a 4.2 Series 1 Roadster. Joining me on the drive through these leafy Shropshire lanes will be the CEO of S&G, Julian Barrett. Thanks for taking us on this drive, Julian. It's uh, very exciting. It's a good, good way of celebrating 60 years of the E-Type. Like, perhaps not with his traffic, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> well, frankly, it's never, it's never a bad thing to go out for driving an E-Type, is it? There's never, no, no, a time when sure. you, there's never a time when you regret it. And now, an E-Type was actually where S&G started, if I'm right in thinking. It's almost 40 years ago that your father bought an E-Type and he got a donor car and he was restoring his one and then he sold the bits off from the donor car, right? And that's uh, kind of how it all started? Yeah, he wasn't really restoring his car. It was really more a case of just keeping the car... Yeah, of just keeping the car going at that point. I mean, we're, we're talking... You know, S&G Barrett was, you know, founded 40 years ago, but he'd been tinkering around some time before that. And it was, um, it was that kind of uh, late 70s. The, uh, the V12 cars weren't really selling. And we forget that an E-Type back in the late 70s, early 80s, certainly an early car would have been that sort of a, that horrible sort of point in its life where it's 20 years old it's probably not new enough where the part supply is healthy you know maybe reliability and all those sort of things so actually access to parts and keeping a car like that on the road would have been a bit more of a challenge i guess so there's a nostalgic viewpoint back when when people have restored a car that they that they think it was immediately you know should have been reliable but these cars weren't they were built on something of a shoestring originally yep. um so uh yeah they were they, they, they weren't necessarily built with uh, with longevity in mind they were built for the uh the beauty and, the, and and keeping it at that price point that, that William Lyons wanted it at. And of course, and values of E-types back then, I mean, we, we, we know E-type values have gone through the roof um, in recent times, but back in the late 70s, early 80s, they, they, they wouldn't have been you know anywhere near where they are today. So of course, the, the economic sense of keeping a car like that on the road wouldn't have been so strong either. Oh, absolutely right. I mean, there's pictures from uh, where our first building was over in, uh, in Wolverhampton, where we've got, we had a kind of E-type scrapyard outside <laughs> where we, we are. And it, uh, I do show this picture occasionally, and I think it should come with some kind of uh, health warning before I show <laughs> yes. it, because it is quite sh it's quite shocking. But yeah, of course, nobody knew that we were going to be here where we are today. Nobody knew that the values were going to be like uh, like they have been in the last uh, in the last years. I think sometimes it's a bit of a shame that the values are you know quite so high because it makes people nervous to drive them. And sometimes I think, yeah. and the, the the real thing about an E-Type, from my point of view, is it's just a fantastic drive. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I I've driven this this car before, and I just remember it being such a glorious drive. I was a bit, you know, nervous at first because, you know, it's your car and, you know, everything, but just, it, it's actually not as intimidating to drive as you might think. It's actually great on a road like this. It's, I think it's really, uh, it's really fun and, and they really nailed it with the E-Type, no doubt about it. Your father and your mother sort of set up S&G Barrett you know, nearly 40 years ago. You're now the CEO. I mean, is there a, a mixture of pride and pressure to sort of keep that legacy <laughs> on, yeah? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is, is pride and pressure. I mean, I've done this job really since, since I left university, but that is, um, that is kind of a full-time role. I was doing uh, wax soiling of manifolds and assembly of light units from probably about the age of 13. So it's a mixture of uh, responsibility and pride that, that, that we're still doing it and that we've got, you know, a lot of people that we look after. We've got a lot of customers all over the world. And it, yeah. Tell us about 50EE then, because you, you must have had this for over 10 years, because wasn't this prepared for the 50th anniversary? Good memory, Phil. There Good go. memory. That's yeah. why 50EE. The, um, yeah, we, we restored this car from a you know, kind of barn fine condition. You know, at that point, we wanted to make it a real showcase for the products that we manufacture, as well as doing some of the upgrades that we offer. And since that time, this car has covered 
thousands of miles. We've done some of the uh, the club events which have involved, have included the uh, the Round Britain Coastal Drive event, which we've done a number of times. I know you've taken this car out yep. for and done a few miles in it. Um, obviously, it goes to every show that we do. It's just been an unbelievable workhorse for us. But in addition to that, it's been actually a great test bed for a lot of the products of that course, we offer. Yes, um, so many times, new products go on here for quite a long time before they'll. Uh, before they'll be released, and also upgrades that we're offering on uh, on cars at the moment. I was talking before. This has got a, a, a power steering kit on, which is I was saying this is the first long drive that I've done with a power steering uh, conversion on. We're actually running a, an experimental five-speed gearbox on the car at the moment, um, so we're, we're evaluating that prior to uh, release. So it's continuously not just trying out new products, but it's also the test bed for something. You know, if somebody says, okay, look, I'm having a slight issue with this, we can come out, try it on this car and uh, see if we can improve it if we need to. We were talking earlier, weren't we, about the fact that, you know, when you when you are, as s and is actually now manufacturing, you know, key components, often from scratch using sort of 3D sort of printing technology and the like, the ability to be able to show people in the flesh these things and so they can get to see the, the quality, the tactility of it all, that's very much part of the cell, I imagine. Yeah, exactly right. It's really important that we have that, you know, that, that backstory and the fact that we can talk, you know, we know the guys, when, when we've produced a new part in here, we know the guys that have designed it and have made sure that it's going to fit and have done the 3D printed model of it and have put it on CAD and have, and have, have made this part come to life. So I imagine a typical E-Type owner isn't somewhat, well, probably a lot of them aren't trailer queens. They are cars that they want to use them for rallies and events. Yeah, I, I would like to say that's the case. I, I think that's probably less the case if you're looking at the really early cars. Uh, flat floor really, stuff. Yeah, the yeah. flat floor, the external bonnet lock cars. Um, those are probably a little bit more looked after. Although when I was at uh, E-Type 60 a couple of weeks ago, the, uh, the E-Type club event, there was a guy with a, a, an outside bonnet lock 3.8 uh, that was driving up, the, um, driving up the hill climb. Oh, good for him. Excellent. I've got one final little poser for you. The ultimate two-car modern and classic Jaguar garage. So you're allowed to have one car from Jaguar's past 10 years yeah. and then something from a classic collection. So what would be your... So I'd stick on the modern, I'd stick F-Type. I'm, I'm on my second F-Type. I absolutely love the F-Type as, as a modern sports car. I think it's just absolutely fantastic. I think, you know, I think it's really hard to, uh, to fault. I think it looks beautiful. I've always had them in the coupe version and I think they look absolutely beautiful. Stunning, aren't they? Great proportions. Now, classic, this is a bit left field, I would go XK120 fixed head. I love the XK120 fixed head, but I cannot fit in it. So I think that makes it more annoying for me because of the fact that I really know that I, without some modifications to me personally, <laughs> I'm never really going to have one and enjoy one. Um, so, but I think as just as just the lines of a car, I think the XK120 fixed head is really, um, it's really, really hard to beat. And I, I absolutely love those. They are stunning, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they are. I, I would have the XFRS Ah oh, yes, that's a strong choice. That's I'd have that, and I and I'm I would have this. <laughs> that, I, I, it's, very, it's very predictable to have a, a series one 4.2 E type, but that would be my definitive classic Jaguar choice. Well, it was a great road trip, uh, Julian. Really enjoyed that. Some fantastic roads. Good way of demonstrating the uh, Series One's prowess. There, it was a really enjoyable drive, I thought. So, um, yeah, we should have some lunch and uh, yep. and toast to 60 years of the E-Type. So, uh, cheers. 60 years of the E-Type. Really good to see you. Nice one. Cheers. cheers. Good health.